Hi, it's Alex Counts, uh, and uh, I'm back uh, taping a video uh, for uh, anyone who's interested. Uh, the original reason I got this tripod and this setup was to tape uh, little lessons from my my book, uh, which, uh, as you some of you know, it's called uh, "When in Doubt, Ask for More." Uh, and uh, and I did a couple of those, but with the change in the world, I've tried to update uh, my approach. Uh, I wrote on my blog something about uh, coping with this uh, coronavirus crisis, uh, alexcounts.com forward slash blog, you can find that. I also wrote one about what comes next, uh, how this might be ultimately turned into a positive somehow. Um, and uh, in kind of building off one of the themes of that blog post, uh, a friend of mine, a uh, good friend, uh, posted something online about how he didn't think a bailout money should go to companies that incorporated in other countries to avoid U.S. taxes. And I said, as a matter of public policy, I agreed. But I also said that we need to get out of this um, way of defining national interest in a zero-sum way and, uh, and uh, looking at it in very narrow and uh, short-term uh, terms. Um, and he strongly disagreed. He said that the first priority was to make sure America was coming out on top and winning and doing well, and then we're in a position to help other countries. But uh, I think that way of thinking uh, is uh, quite outmoded when it comes to thinking of uh, trying to address some of the transnational problems that we're, we're now facing uh, in society. Um, and, um, and just to take a step back, I've been reading another book um, called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. A lot of people have been talking about this. I only started reading it fairly recently uh, by Yuval Noah Hariri. And he, a um, lot of things in the book that are quite inspiring, scary, frightening, thought-provoking about the future, uh, the world we live in now. Um, but one of the things in this book, the chapter seven about nationalism, uh, he said, he, one of the things he observes is that human beings uh, for probably a long time have only been able to form relationships, uh, deep relationships with about 150 people, maybe some 200 if it's exceptional cases. And, the military has, has organized itself with, based on that insight, uh, and many other organizations have consciously or, or not. Uh, and that's one of the things that led to, in kind of hundreds of years ago, we were basically organized as tribes, um, and uh, of, of many times around 150 people. And what people found is that there were certain things that tribes alone, uh, groupings at that level, could not deal with issues of. Um, kind of mutual uh, security from invading forces or managing uh, natural resources. And so they kind of federated and ultimately what came out was the nation state. Uh, the nation state, uh, as the author talks about, is a very powerful force, has allowed the solving of many problems. It's quite remarkable. Um, but uh, there's certain issues that really we can't solve at the level of the nation state. Uh, he talks about three. Uh, he talks about the kind of nuclear proliferation, it talks about the environmental, especially the climate crisis, and talks about the risks and opportunities of biotech uh, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, and the opportunities and risks, real risks of all three of those, um, you can't, as a nation, you can't tackle it alone. Uh, and so he urges that we redefine nationalism, say that, uh, and say that you know, certain things we may need to give up our national short-term interest to join hands with other countries to address some of these issues that, again, just don't make sense to address at the level of the nation. If we, uh, whatever we do in terms of our carbon emissions, if the rest of the world doesn't follow suit, uh, that's gonna have much more influence than what we do, for example. So I wanna just urge you all uh, to take a look at this, uh, this book, uh, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. The same author has written an article on what comes after the coronavirus uh, crisis. Uh, it's in the Financial Times, uh, and it is free. Most articles are not in the FT. Uh, so take a look at that. Uh, stay safe. Uh, cope as best you can. Uh, think about what comes next uh, for you, for your family, for your community, for your country, for your world. Think about what that means for you. And uh, I'll close simply saying uh, my title of my book, When in Doubt, Ask for More. Well, I'm in doubt now about many things. We all are. Um, so let's ask for more. Let's ask for more. Uh, especially from our countries uh, in terms of how we collaboratively work with uh, other countries to solve issues that can't really be solved at the level of the nation state. Uh, take a page from uh, um, scientists who are collaborating in uh, unprecedented ways, but in ways that are extensions of ways scientists have collaborated for a long time. 
Uh, there aren't Italian scientists and Japanese and Chinese and Russian scientists and American scientists. There are scientists trying to solve this problem and they're sharing information so that the job gets done, uh, not so that one nation comes out on top. And uh, uh, so uh, good luck to all of you. Stay in touch.